Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty village of St Marybourne in Hampshire. It's about uh, five miles northeast of Andover and 12 miles west of Basingstoke on the B3048. And we're going to be doing a roughly five mile circular route exploring the village and then heading out into downlands, a patchwork of fields and following old drovers routes, ending with an enchanting lake. A quite delightful walk in the North Wessex Downs area of outstanding natural beauty. Well I'm filming uh, right at the end of March but it's a beautiful spring day, the sun's out blue sky hardly a cloud in the in the sky it should be perfect conditions for walking so do come along with us well i parked my car at the uh, free uh, village parish car park which is next to the uh, village post office let's go for a little wander through the village i've just made my way to the eastern side of the village for a little exploration on some quite exquisite thatched houses here with some great names oak beams what's that over there flower pot cottage oh what about this one here april cottage just look at that thatch <laughs> you see the what's that a, a, a goose at the top by the chimney pot oh it's like uh, as if I'm uh, heading back a century or two. A malt house there. And there's uh, the church you can see there. What a pretty, pretty little village. Another lovely cottage, church cottage, which is appropriately right next door to the church itself. Looking quite uh, stunning in the sunshine this morning. It's the Church of St Peter, originally dedicated to St Mary, but changed to St Peter in the, the 14th century. Lovely. Now, I don't normally do this, but let's have a little wander through because it, it, it gets, well, it's pretty anyway, but it gets even prettier when you go round the, the back. It really has got a very, very peaceful churchyard There's some thatch there on the on the right yeah see what I mean it's almost like um, <laughs> somebody's garden isn't it very 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 pretty okay so if I slowly turn back at the church there we go there I'll tell you a little bit about it um, what it comprises of a chancel nave north aisle south chapel South Isle, uh, South Porch and uh, West Tower. It probably originates uh, from Anglo-Saxon times and it, it became a chapel of ease for the church of Hurstbourne Priors which is to the south of here. There are no details earlier than the, the second half of the 12th century that can be seen now. The present chancel was built in early 14th century the south chapel of the nave was added in 1350 and the tower started to be built in 1420 with further rebuilding in the 16th and 17th centuries. I think it has six bells. The south porch is comparatively modern and there's a terrific yew tree here which uh, they reckon is at least 800 years old. Okay folks, in we go. Now I have found the light switch so we might be okay, although it's still quite dark now. Wow, look at this. Now, regular viewers would have seen something similar to this when we went to the church at uh, East Meon. It's uh, another uh, font from Tournay uh, in Belgium. It's uh, one of only four in Hampshire. There's one at uh, Winchester Cathedral. Uh, one at East Meon, which of course we've seen. There's one at St Michael's in Southampton. And there's this one. Indeed, I think there's only seven in the, the UK. Thought to be a gift from the Bishop Henry de Blois in the 12th century. 
And as I said, it's made in Tournay, I think that's how you pronounce it in Belgium. It's not actually um, marble, it's a, a type of limestone that can be polished up to look like marble. And I think this one is not on its original base uh, or uh, pillar. And it's been carved with symbolism, Norman arches, doves drinking, the water of eternal life, the fleur-de-lis representing the, the Virgin Mary and vines bearing fruit. But they, they really are quite uh, magnificent uh, objects, aren't they? Well, seeing as we're in the church, let's have a little look round. And uh, some terrific uh, stained glass windows, particularly this one just ahead of me in the front of the altar. And uh, there's the organ, left hand side. Some very impressive uh, ceiling. And then just passing around this side by the pulpit. And uh, <laughs> I thought this was a fireplace, but there's actually a, um, an effigy in there. Oh, what a beautiful church. Oh, that really was a splendid church, wasn't it? Right, let's uh, continue wandering through the village westwards. <laughs> oh, another chocolate box cottage. It's so well done well maintained okay now i think we're heading towards the center of the village now morning morning so this is the george inn grade two listed described as mid 19th century although there are records of a pub on the site uh, dating back to 1781 now we will be going down spring hill lane but Oh, there's so much more of this village to explore, so let's carry on. Look at that. See all the doves on the, uh, the thatch there, enjoying the warmth there. Now this property over here on the left, um, that was uh, once a, a pub many years ago, the Plough Inn. I think it was older than the George. Uh, I've, I've seen a picture of it. Um, I think it dates back to the 17th century. And this, uh, quite enchanting little stream down here is the Bourne Rivulet, a tributary of the River Test. It's uh, known as the Bourne locally and it is a, a winter bourne, a seasonal chalk stream. It, it runs from Upton village in the west and joins the Test near Tufton. Indeed the name St Mary Bourne possibly derives from the Bourne as under the old calendar it may have always risen on um, St Mary's Day which is the 2nd of February. Right, should we get in horses? Right. Uh -oh, Let's uh, continue with our little uh, wander. So we're heading uh, westwards. I'm pretty sure there's some uh, more thatch cottages to enjoy down here. So, yes, I thought so. What an unusual building on the right there. Very, very narrow. <laughs> if it wasn't for the for the cars and the the bins you could be taken back as I said already in another age look at this one I keep saying look at this one but <laughs> they're all really quite splendid <laughs> another wow building okay well this is probably about as far west as we're going but I thought we'd have a I thought you'd enjoy this little wander through and uh, I wonder if um I wonder if that's a maybe a lodge or something at the end of an estate I don't know well hopefully you enjoyed that little tour through the village I certainly did so let's head back to the uh, to the George and then go down a little lane and uh, head out into the countryside <laughs>
little pit stop to admire the view. So this is looking over to the to the east. Some little green shoots beginning to to come through now. Real spring day. So we're continuing to head uh, northwards. Uh, we're following a, a public footpath that just goes alongside this field here with a hedge on the right. Well, I can't believe how warm it is today. I don't think I, I needed my gilet after all. And it's what, 24th of uh, March, something like that. Anyway, from up here, really is quite beautiful up here. Time for some Whippet Zoomies. Another little pit stop, <laughs> some benches here for a little rest as well. So we're going to carry along down this uh, path across the field and then where those trees are we then start heading left in a sort of uh, northwesterly direction. made our way slightly uphill we had a lovely little copse uh, little downham's copse on our left and loads of spring flowers out and uh, some more great views behind me here looking across again to the uh, well this is looking northwards really and just by me here looks like that's uh, some sort of deer seat I expect okay so we're going to continue along the side of this field heading towards uh, a place called Wadick or Wadwick well they interestingly enough on a an 1895 map it uh, shows it as being called Warwick and this is just coming into uh, Wadick I hope I pronounced that right the lower Wadick house which I think is grade 2 listed uh, early 19th century it looks as though it's been uh, refurbished so we carry on down this little path here and then along a road and then we take a right uh, before we start heading southwards quick update on the route There's a sign here just behind me um, Wadick bottom now we're not continuing straight on to St Marybourne instead turn westwards towards Binley Gosh, <laughs> look at these. I'm afraid I'm not an expert on tanks and uh, war vehicles, but uh, ah, sort of <laughs> don't expect to come across that on a countryside walk, that's for sure. Okay, so I need just to wander down here, and I'm looking for a footpath sign that's going to take us to the left and I think it's ah here we go down here and this is going to take us along an old drover's route back to uh, St Marybourne. Well the uh, drove that uh, we're coming down southwards now is called Long Hedge Drove which is appropriate because sure enough there's a hedge on one side it's also part of the uh, Brenda Parker Way, which is a 78 mile long distance path from uh, Aldershot to Andover, uh, named after Brenda Parker. She was uh, a volunteer uh, for the Ramblers for many years. I think she wrote a number of books as well. Um, she sadly died in 2008 and in 2011, the uh, North Hampshire Downs Ramblers group uh, created this uh, route in her memory. 
and uh, its uh, its waymark sign is a, a chaffinch because Brenda was uh, a great lover of birds. But certainly from up here, the view is absolutely tremendous. It really is. Of course, on a day like today, it makes it even better. A little bit hazy in the far distance, but uh, gorgeous nonetheless. Now heading back into the village. In fact, we'll shortly be joining the Test Way, which is that uh, 44 mile long distance path that basically follows most of the course of the, the river Test. I'm almost tired of saying there's another wonderful thatch property just behind me here. <laughs> Isn't that delightful on the, uh, the Staddle stones there? So sweet. And that's the main property on the, the other side. Quite resplendent and very typical of so many of the, uh, the houses and cottages around here. It's uh, really has been a pleasure to come through this village. The countryside is a place to play, a place to run around and have a lovely day, but also listen to the beautiful sound. Catherine Lewis, age 11. I couldn't agree more. Well, the last thing that we're going to look at before we get back to the car is this quite magnificent lake in the village that's just behind me here. Isn't that wonderful? Now, the lake is the brainchild of a, a local GP called Dr Evans. Uh, he had the area excavated in the 1970s and groundwater appeared. The lake was gifted to the village in 1990 and it's looked after by the parish council. It's actually fed by groundwater in the, the valley and the, the level of water varies throughout the year. Beautiful. A beautiful end to the walk, I think you'll all agree. Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a, a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We've got a super walk today. The weather has been quite glorious. And what better way to end with a pint of Wainwrights at the George Inn. <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching. And cheerio. Oh, that's lovely. Now, a crisp for you. <laughs>